Here we go, inside the fort. Wow. Wow, might as well go clear around, huh? Wow. <laughs> cool. Well, even their hinges on the doors were wood. Wow. Can you imagine being shut up in this all winter long? <laughs> This is what the homes look like back then. There's a pair of shoes, some stockings. That's where the fireplace would have been. There's a side entrance to the fort. Here's another one of the homes. And the back wall of their house is the wall of the fort. Could you imagine living in something this tiny? And when the Indians raided, they'd have to take cover in here until the... raids were over. Oh. You've got to be out of your gourd. This must be the gourd house, the storage house. No. Oh. That's all you can see, unless you look in this window. Okay.
there's a horn. them for warm clothes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one. This looks like another much bigger home. Or maybe this was some kind of inn. There's beds in here, an old table. There's two beds right there. A very large family or some sort of worker stayed in that one. pretty much the same. Must be a potter's wheel. There's a baby care or baby cradle. They had very few items. Which is sad because anytime there was an Indian raid, probably anything they had would be carried off or destroyed. by the Native Americans. Here's uh, the two center buildings that you saw in that model. This is where uh, they made their daily necessities. And they had their meeting places, their schools, their churches, whatever else in these two buildings. Okay, this one building says uh, gun shop. And over here, what's your meeting house? So let's go look. Hi, good morning. Welcome to our 
our training post. Oh, thank you. So this building is where we talk about uh, some different men's activities out here on the frontier. So things like the woodworking, gunsmithing, fur trade, that kind of thing. Um, but this is also where we sell the items that are made here uh, at the fort. So everything is on a counter and the wall behind it is what's for sale. And the stuff on the counter is what's been made here. Okay. So if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to ask. I wonder how much that blue glass is. They got bells. Yeah. Here's the items they make here to uh, sell. that blue glass up there. The phone going? Yeah. Uh-oh. Now we're going into the meeting house. And wrapping on that beam, but of course you leave the tails on this side. Right, right. Otherwise you have problems. Yeah. I was missing the schools of now she's got it. Now I see. Wow. Wow. Yep. This so is what's, just but when they're doing projects, they're going whatever they've spun during the winter is what they're going on there. Right. And have, you know, so hopefully it's, a, you know, this one's what, six and a half yards? Uh, probably, because each thread is seven and a half yards long. And you generally lose wow. about a yard. You've got tails on the end where it's tied on, on each end, and then just yeah. you know, take up that away. Yeah. And then this will have to be Wooden full, shoes. Uh, which is a washing project. Oh, and and it will be a little bit, not much, not much in length, uh, because this is linen. Linen uh, is very wow. uh, shrink resistant, right, shall we say. On side, the wool will shrink a little bit, mm -hmm. depending on how uh, energetic I am with my fulling. No. That's yeah. pretty, so you can really see it here, the orange, I think they call them dummy warps. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one right, all they the still have permanently. I never take it, I never take it off. And that way I don't have okay. to every time I've done a project. Right. Right. Well, should so we go to exactly the iron? You the Thank you. Oh, you're very Thank welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're headed over to the blacksmith's house. Or shop, I should say. shop Hi So don't picture that it's frozen in time from, you know, the 1800s. It's not. Um, that bed was in here, though. It came back to the house from the descendant who had it. Uh, Joe died in that bed in the kitchen he made with his own hands, with his family around him. So uh, one of his stepdaughters looked after him through his whole illness and saw him uh, on his way. 
he put in his will that she got the parlor organ. So we're thinking that she must have been musically, because there was a parlor organ uh, in this third room that you'll see. But it was common to keep something in the kitchen laid down long because before the central heat, yeah. you know, as you're pointing out, this, this is going to be a busy, warm room. Yes. Uh, that now, makes a lot of sense. The, uh, the bowl, the heavy wooden bowl over there, uh, belonged to Job and his family, and that's uh, for the three things that you need to do to butter after it comes out of the churn before it's fit for the table, and then the two dark baskets of the three on the, the cupboard here um, belong to Job and his family, and it's reported that big brother John, who built the one house that still stands, uh, that he had made those. Right. That could be bad. But everything else yeah. is the same. <coughs> yeah, the walls would be like that. The they have a. And they probably had a regular stove and cooking things. Well, we don't know. We weren't here. Oh, we <laughs> Neither was Nellie. Wow. <coughs> and it would have changed every generation. There would have been something yeah. that changed. We know that one generation <coughs> tore out the. Uh, they were closed off the hearth and put a big cook stove and ran the stovepipe out the roof there. Oh. I'm sure Joe was doing flip-flops in his grave about that time, saying, you cut a hole in the what? <laughs> <laughs> cut a hole in the ridge pole, for heaven's sake. Who ever heard of such a thing? Oh, you're good. Go ahead. Do you're you fine. Know what that wooden thing is up on the... It, it's a, some kind of repair that somebody had attempted when... <coughs> they put the porch on, mm. but we don't, that's all we know about it. Mm. Okay. Now, when you come into the next room, there's a little, <coughs> excuse me, a little partial step up here. Mm -hmm. Job's bedroom and an informal family sitting room. So when family was indoors and not in bed sleeping, they'd be hanging out in the two rooms that we've seen. The room door behind me would have been kept shut most of the time. Uh, there's a coal burning fireplaces from this point on. The forest is gone. Now, before you're thinking uh, frontier, don't. There are roads everywhere. There are towns and villages everywhere. It's the 1800s. Queen Victoria is on the throne. The Industrial Revolution is in full swing. Um, there's a train coming through the property. There's locks and dams on the Monongahela, okay? And the forest is gone. Mm -hmm. So these are coal-burning fireplaces. Now the rocker with no arms, that was Rebecca's. Um, a woman's rocker didn't normally have arms because they got in the way of the things she would do. Uh, needlework, right. nursing a baby, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Now the dishes in this cupboard um, are that her pad. That's her pattern. Now Rebecca is what layer of this is the great? No, Rebecca's the second wife. The second wife of Joe. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's the one that came from a little bit of mm -hmm. money, but that's not why she had those dishes. That's very working class, very affordable by this time. Wow. Okay. It's not. Uh, it's not dainty, it's not expensive, it's mm. ironstone or stoneware. It's very, very durable, very big, busy working class family stuff. Mm. Um, we think this, this coverlet was woven by by Big Brother John. We, I don't know if we'll ever be able to prove it or not, but wow. whoever did it, I promise you, uh, was excellent at what they do. Yes, I can't believe the pattern. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this looks complex. That well, that one's at least 100 years older. Wow. That, that coverlet right there is probably 250 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Job's bedroom and an informal sitting room. So the children obviously slept someplace else, up those steps they'd go. The room above us is where all the boys slept. There'll be a couple of big cord beds up there because the springs on that, that cot in there. That's one of the things that makes us pretty sure that came with Rebecca. It's a little too modern for Eliza, the first wife. Okay, and with Rebecca's 
little bit of money in a family background. It's not that she went out and bought that or any of the furnishings that she would have brought to the house, but they were still been a little, a little more store-bought than what mm -hmm. uh, Louisa, the first wife, would have had. Mm -hmm. But up the steps they go. The room above us, there'd be two, a couple of big cord beds up there, a chest or two, a chair or two, and that's where all the boys slept. Now this is Nellie coming into play here with her information. Now the girls just paraded through the boys' room. Everybody went to bed at the same time out in the country in those days. And through a door like this, and the girls' room set up the same way. That's where all the girls slept. Now, the, this wall goes all the way to the roof, and it is solid brick also. Okay. It's a very, <clears throat> very stabilizing uh, feature of, of the house. Now, there's something, no hallway is not unusual. So then that hallway would be a waste of space. Mm -hmm. What is unusual about those two rooms is that they each have a small coal burning fireplace. And before the days of central heat, working class folks did not have heat sources um, on the second floor as a rule. It would be unusual. Mm -hmm. So, who's in the picture? It's just a model. Those are Courier and Ives prints. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, the lady in the oval um, over there, that's Joe's first mother in law. That's Louisa's mother. She's a mm. very beautiful woman. Yeah. Doesn't look anything. Louisa doesn't look anything like her. I've seen photos of Louisa, and her. Yeah. She, she must have looked just like her dad. Or she doesn't look like that woman at all. Mm -hmm. And this rod over my head is one of two. There's one in the boys' bedroom in the same place that Joe put in when he built the house mm -hmm. to prevent bulging or swaying. Mm -hmm. oh, That's not repair. That. It's not a correction. He put that in to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. You put the baby bed in the end of the Wow. This is a nice one. This is beautiful. Don't be afraid to walk on the carpet for heaven's sake. That's why it's here. <laughs> okay, this room would have been kept closed off most of the time. There'd be heavy drapes in here uh, that would keep the heat and the sun out in the summer and the cold out in the winter. And when there were family events, they'd open this room up. If the company came, it'd be through that door, okay? That's Not that one, that front door. door. As a sign of honor and uh -huh. you know, cordiality and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, parlor, front room, sitting room, courting room, I've heard all kinds of names, but none of them are what the crickets use. They call it the good room or the best room. Oh, all their good and best furnishings would be in here. Sunday after church, they come home in their church clothes and open this room up and just enjoy each other. There might be music. Remember the parlor organ, mm -hmm. um, might be stories, might be company, might be visiting, and this was like a treat. You know, moderns just don't, especially younger moderns, just don't do that. Yeah. You grab the best first and <laughs> wonder why you're bored in five minutes. <laughs> there are no millennials among us, so I didn't think you'd mind if I said that. <laughs> probably in the same mindset. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So oh, he must have just put fresh coal on his fire. By the way, mm -hmm. Nellie said she never remembers that she and her sisters ever bothered to use their fireplace. She didn't say anything about the boys. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much any of you know about starting a coal fire, but it's not like starting a campfire. Mm -hmm. That's a rock for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. You have to build they, another fire they first. They used actual coal, not charcoal. The charcoal isn't coal anyhow, it's wood. Right, it's wood, that's right. Coal is a rock. Oh yeah, it takes okay. a lot of heat. Now, it, it is eventually flammable, but it takes a lot to get it to catch. Yeah. Now once you get a coal fire going, it's very efficient. But it takes a lot. It takes, it takes him 15 to 30 minutes to get a good fire going. And he's yeah. highly experienced. And that's the nature of coal. Okay. Yeah. Well, can you picture these girls? They've been in school all day. Uh, they, they've helped with the farm chores. They've helped with the house chores. Well, don't you know, oh, get another quilt out of the trunk. <laughs> and, and the fire has to be strong. It's not just getting it to catch and then you go to bed. 
it's got to be a strong fire if it's going to last part way through the night that you can bank. Yeah. Okay? Well, and you're not going to be running fires up there all day with nobody up there. Right, right, right. But I would say those fireplaces rarely have ever got used, don't you know? Now, one last thing. This photo right here is very telltale. It's downtown Fairmont in 1865. <laughs> all right. Here's downtown Fairmont in 1865, okay? That's the Monongahela River. And there's a wonderful bridge across here, okay? The high level, million dollar, uh -huh. Jefferson Street, somebody Mollahan Bridge. It was right there in that picture. It's not in this picture, but if it, you know, if this were modern. Uh, the gateway connectors coming in this way. Uh -huh. Our back would be, as we look at this, to the interstate. Can you picture? Now, look how industry is looking, not as an yes. in industry, but how very profitable, uh, prosperous mm -hmm. Fairmont looks in 1865. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the railroad bridge right there. Mm -hmm. Now, Palatine Park is right here now. Okay, can you okay. The, some of the pillars to this bridge yes. are still there. Yes, they I've are. seen them. Yes, they are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But prosperity always has a price tag, doesn't it? Okay, and if you look at this back hill, the trees are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you look at that same vista now, there's lots of trees there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But they're, you know, 30 to 50 years old at best, yeah. Yeah. as yeah. opposed yeah. to three to 400 yeah. years old. That's what they were yeah, cutting out, and they're all cold. hardwoods. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Flowers. Catch some of the flowers. He didn't get much of the black stuff. Black eyed Susan. There wasn't really much to see. He was over in a corner and. No. The flowers are all pretty much dead. Give up, Mama. Coleus. Huh? What? Huh? What's it say? Keep or remove, post pick to prove. Okay, what's that one say? Same thing. Nick, West Virginia. Huh, cool. Post pick. You about ready? Yeah. Well, there you have it, a different type of tour of Brickett's Fort. You got to see and hear a little bit of the history of the place. I want to thank you all for joining and coming in along with us. And don't forget to hit that like button and share. Thanks. Mm -hmm.